I just went and saw the Spy Family Code White movie. It's a non-canon movie, but it really could have been. It was super fun if you're already a fan of the show, and it functions as an introduction if you want to take someone to see it who doesn't know anything about the show. I'll try to be vague and not give anything too spoilery. But in the beginning, you start off with a big exposition dump. You kind of meet all the characters really quickly, figure out the situation. And the whole premise of the movie is that it's kind of a what if of if they were going to shut down Operation Strix. And Lloyd is like, oh, she really needs to get a Stella so we can keep this going. And there's a dessert contest at her school, so he needs her to win. So the principal likes some really specific dessert that's pretty old school and it's famous in one region, which looks like this world's equivalent of Switzerland. So they go there for the weekend to try to get this dessert, and that way Lloyd can taste it, figure out the ingredients, and remake it, and then teach Anya. So the first half of the movie is this. It's very similar to the show, kind of slice of lifey. You get all the usual stuff. Lloyd doesn't understand Yor or Anya. Yor gets drunk, and she's worried about Lloyd leaving her. Anya's getting into shenanigans. And the second half is very Mission Impossible inspired. And if you remember, they actually mirrored their poster after Dead Reckoning, which is the latest Mission Impossible movie. So you can just Google that. You'll see the side by side. It's very deliberate. I think they announced they were doing it deliberately. You know, it's a funny thing. So in the whole second half of the movie, they get wrapped up into this military thing in this other little country because they're trying to set off the war between the East and West. Obviously, that's the whole plot of the show. Those are most of the threats that Lloyd deals with is keeping the peace as much as he can. So the first half almost functions like a highlight reel of sort of the tropes of the show and the jokes they use over and over. And the second half is pretty fun, and it's kind of just its own thing. And the reason I said it could be canon is if they just didn't put it at any particular point in the timeline, I think it would be pretty easy because it doesn't change anything. They go out of the country, do their mission, and then come back. For all the fans of Yor and Twilight together, which I think the shippers call them Twy Yor, they lean into that pretty hard especially in the first half. You know, they lean into Lloyd, again, realizing how much he doesn't want to leave the family lifestyle and all that behind because he likes that lifestyle, even though he always does the it's for the mission thing. Then obviously Anya wants their family to stay together because it's the only family she's had. So yeah, I'm not going to get too specific because it just came out in the US, but it was really fun. There was one part that my wife was just cackling like an idiot in the theater and I was laughing too. It was really funny. And I won't say anything specific. I'll just say that it involved poop. (laughs) And they actually do this whole bit where they change the art style and it goes way over the top. And it goes on and on as a joke. But I just thought it was hilarious. Juvenile or not. And obviously, you know how the movie's going to end. You know, they do their trip, do their mission, come back, and it picks up where it left off. If you're a fan of the show, it's a really fun movie. Worth it to go hang out in the theater for a couple hours, get out of the house, go see it. If you have someone you know who you'd like to watch the show, I think it's not a bad introduction, but the show is probably still a better introduction because the show takes its time with the buildup. This one really is just like a five minute-ish dump of exposition. And because of the setup, you're really focused on Lloyd, Yor, and Anya. Like you see a little bit of the other characters, they get brief appearances. Fiona's in a decent amount, but like Yuri gets sidelined so he can't interfere. Obviously none of the students with Anya are in there. Frankie's not in there except for a little bit. So you lose a lot of the dynamics that I think people really enjoy in the show, even if they're not constantly in the show all the time, like Yuri and Frankie and Damien and all of them. And the second half of the movie might be the most over-the-top action I've seen in the series, like show or manga. It just goes crazy. But they do have like a nice little nod in there to the first Mission Impossible movie with the super famous scene where Tom Cruise is slowly being lowered from the ceiling and the floor is below him. You know, they do the over-the-dramatic, save the day just by the skin of their teeth deal, just like the Mission Impossible movies. Obviously, they use the James Bond-esque movie a lot like the show. This one, I feel like they used also very similar music to Mission Impossible as well. So they really just leaned into it and had fun with it. So I'm not going to go on and on about it. If you like Spy Family, go see it. Even if you don't like Spy Family, it might still be a fun movie. I don't know. It's hard for me to guess what someone would think who doesn't know anything about it. But it's set up to where you can know nothing and go see it. I'm going to stop there for this one. If you saw the movie, let me know what you thought. I try to respond to all the comments that aren't just insults. Like and subscribe and all that. Thanks. See ya.